What's up guys, my name is Bart Komar, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to make a zero clearance insert for your miter saw and why you need it 100% of the time in your saw instead of the original insert that it came with. Yeah, welcome to the Komar Project. Okay, so an insert, or what it's sometimes referred to as a kerf or support plate, is supposed to do just that, support the wood when you're cutting it. But in most saws, the opening for the plate is much wider than the actual blade itself. So when the wood is being cut, it's not truly being supported all the way to the blade, which results in that dreaded tear out that we all hate so much. So let's run a couple of tests before we start, so that way we have something to compare it to once we get finished. First we have some 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. And as you can see that tear out is severe, it's pretty much as bad as it comes. Now how would you like to have that in your finished project? But maybe it's just plywood, so let's try my favorite walnut. Not bad, but definitely not something that you want to deal with and if we can prevent it then why not? And finally, let's try some ash. Pretty bad, right? Yeah, so let's do something to make all of that go away forever. This insert is going to be for the Bosch GCM 12SD 12 inch miter saw. And to get full access to the plate, I'm gonna be removing the fence. Now it's not necessary to remove that fence, but it overlaps onto the plate a bit and this will make things just a little bit easier for us. Now this saw has a split curve plate, meaning that it's in two separate pieces that you can move side to side individually. I know that quite a few saws have this design, but if yours is a single piece, well, you're in luck because you can just remove that plate and skip to the next step. But if your saw is like mine, we need to remove the plate in one piece so we can make an identical replica of it for a template. And to do that, I'm placing a few drops of CA glue on a plate and some scrap pieces of wood to attach the two sides together, kind of like a ladder, and then we can remove it. All right guys, so we got our plate out and it's in one piece. And next we're gonna be making a template out of some plywood. And the reason why we're making a template is because if I mess this up on the first try, it's not gonna be as bad if I mess it up on walnut or mahogany. And if you make a template down the road, if you wanna make some more of these, you don't have to go through this process. You can just take that template, transfer it onto a piece of hardwood, and you're ready to rock and roll. So, let's do that. Tracing the plate onto the plywood is not really necessary. It just helps to know where to place the double-sided tape, which I'm using to attach the two sides. And this is going to create a strong temporary bond and allow us to cut it out. I first ran it through my table saw, leaving about a quarter of an inch all the way around the plate, and then I can take it over to the router table. I set my flush trim bit so that the bearing is riding on the original plate and the cutting blade of the bit is on the plywood. Then I can flush trim the template, creating a copy of the original plate that will fit perfectly into our miter saw. And this doesn't have to be done on the router table. I have made multiple inserts using a regular palm router and was able to get the same exact results. So basically just use whatever you have to accomplish the job. Now since this is a two piece plate, we don't have anything to reference the bit on between the two sides on the ends. So to get rid of that little nub, I just used a flexible ruler to mark the radius or you can just freehand it and then you can take it over to the sander and slowly remove it until it's all even. Next we need to drill some holes to accept the mounting screws and this can get a little tricky because they need to be fully recessed into the plate and we're gonna have to drill two different sized holes, a through hole and a countersunk hole to act as a washer. To figure out the size of the holes that I needed, I grabbed the screw and compared it to a couple of drill bits I had. Once that was all figured out, I was able to start drilling the through hole first. Now, the countersink holes only need to be done in the zero clearance insert and not the template because we're not actually installing the template. 
but to know where the through holes are located, it's a good idea to transfer them onto the template now for future reference. And with a little bit of finesse on the drill press and some file work, we're able to get these oblong holes just perfectly sized so that we can move on to the next step. All right, so we have our template completely done. We don't need that original insert anymore. We're gonna be using this template for everything else moving forward. And the next step is to actually transfer this onto a piece of wood that we're gonna be using for that insert. You can pretty much use any kind of wood you want. However, you wanna stay away from some crazy things like this ash here, where the grain is doing so many different things. It's jumping from sap wood to heartwood. It's got a bunch of beautiful twists. And the reason we don't wanna use something as crazy as this is because of warpage. Over time, this wood is going to warp with the seasonal expansion and contraction. Not much, it's not a big insert, but it's gonna have a little bit of movement. And if you're doing a lot of high-end work where precision is key, you want that thing to be perfectly flat all the time. So you want something with straight grain. Like this cherry, for instance, this is a great piece that can work for it. If you wanna get fancy with some purple heart, as long as it's got straight grain, you're good to go. But for me, my favorite wood is walnut, so that's what we're gonna be using for this insert. Let's do it. So now that our wood is selected, it's time to make the actual insert. And it's the same process as making the template, but now we have to take into consideration the thickness of it. We want our rough piece to be just a little bit thicker than the original insert, so you can slowly bring the thickness of it down as you need it. You can accomplish this in a couple of ways. I chose to do it at the drum sander, but you can use a planer or a CNC if you have it. Once it's nice and flat and we've achieved the desired thickness, we can attach the template using double-sided tape again and over at the router table trim our insert to exact size. Then again at the drill press, I used the holes we drilled before as a guide to drill through the insert and then I switched over to the larger 3 8 bit to make the countersink for the screws to sit in. You want to be very careful not to drill all the way through because if you do, you're gonna have to start over. So take your time, check the depth frequently and only drill down far enough for the screw to sit nice and flush. Now we can test to make sure that the insert fits and sits flush with the saw. And this one was a bit low and I think I took too much off with the sander, but that's okay. I can place a few small washers under that plate which will elevate it perfectly with the saw. And even if you're a little high, you can take it down a bit more or you can fine tune it with a palm sander. Then a little bit of wax or whatever your favorite finish is and this zero clearance insert is ready to be installed. All right guys, so that is it. This is probably one of the easiest improvements that you can do to your miter saw, but it makes a world of difference. So the only thing's left to do is to cut it down the middle and run some plywood through it. Let's do it. Okay, so our insert is in, it's cut through, and you guys remember this piece of plywood? with all this tear out on it. We're gonna use the same exact piece and see what it looks like now. There go, there's absolutely no tear out on this piece of plywood. As opposed to the opposite side, this side, where this is the tear out from the miter saw before and the opposite side of that. So as you guys can tell, it works. Now, let's try it on some walnut. There you go. There's absolutely no tear out on that piece. It works and it works really well. If you guys get anything out of my channel, get yourself a zero clearance insert. You need this. You need this in your life. Put one in your miter saw, put one in your table saw. You're not gonna regret it. All right guys, so that's it. We got a zero clearance insert. 
we got ourselves a template so we can make a lot more of these down the road. If something happens to this one, if I change my mind and don't want walnut anymore and want purple heart, I can knock those out very quickly with this template here. So that's pretty much it. It's fairly easy. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, hitting that bell notification. If you have any questions, leave your comments down below and I'll see you guys on the next one.